to acknowledge that there is something going on, that he has got your attention.
to to hear our voice and, and come to us and we praise your name for all the wondrous things that you've done at youth camp your blood has saved so many lives and i pray that the hearts that have been changed at youth camp can, can come to know you more and more and we can just embrace the glories of god and serve you and love you more and i pray that your spirit can come into this place and work in our hearts and our souls so we can see you more and in your name we pray Good morning, everyone. Good morning, youth campers. <laughs> and hey, one clarification. Uh, we've been kind of in youth camp mode for weeks. And uh, this past week, it would be easy for anyone to identify those who had been to youth camp because we pretty much were just laying around on our couches looking bleary-eyed all week long, recovering from an intense couple of days. However, this is not youth camp Sunday. It is youth Sunday. We are celebrating all of our youth in the church and the various capacities that they are engaged in the body of Christ here at Saving Grace Church. So if you are a young person involved in 1DC or Kids Cove or youth camp or Transform or whatever, this Sunday we're excited about, we're excited about you all the time, but we're making a point of being excited about you this week. Uh, if we haven't met, my name is Jason Rummel. If you are visiting for the first time today, we are very glad you're here. This is not a typical Sunday, uh, so that's officially your invite to come back and see what a typical Sunday is like. Um, there are these cards in either the backs of your chairs, and if you don't have one nearby, there is the Connect Center out in the lobby. If you are new, we would love for you to fill one of these out, okay? That way we know who you are. We can give you a call, contact you, see what's happening, invite you to things, let you know what's going on. So please... Uh, help us to get to know you if you're visiting here for the first time. I'd like to invite the ushers forward. We're going to take up our offering here in a moment. Let me pray and then those guys can start. Father God, we are so thankful because everything that we have is from you, Lord. Help us to see that. Help us to understand it. And Father, help us by changing our hearts to be cheerful givers of the things that you have given to us. And Lord, also give us the wisdom to know exactly what you would have us do with the things that are given. Father, we ask that we would use them exactly as you have intended. Father, to further your kingdom here in this region um, and in this place, Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys can go ahead and start. All right, a couple of things going on today that we're excited about. Today is the fifth Sunday of June, and that means that we are having a baptism. However, we are not having a baptism here, as we do sometimes. It is going to be outdoors at Yellow Creek State Park. Now, if you are intending to go, which we highly recommend that you go, it's going to be a beautiful day. Um, it is on the North Shore area of Yellow Creek. I would not, I was tempted to try to hazard giving you directions to the North Shore area, but as well intentioned as I might be, I'm afraid I would mess it up and then everyone would be lost in the back roads out there. So um, if you need directions to the North Shore side of Yellow Creek, directions are at the Connect Center. Everyone is encouraged to come and stay after the baptism for food and fellowship. The church will provide hot dogs, drinks, and place settings, individuals and families are encouraged to bring a dish to share. Important note, it's at 4 p.m. Okay, almost forgot that. It's at 4 p.m. and everyone is welcome. Now, because we're on the North Shore side of Yellow Creek State Park, there's no swimming this year. The swimming area is on the other side and it's in the middle of being a big reconstruction project. However, fishing, canoeing, kayaking, whatever else you wanna do, with the lake there is absolutely welcome and encouraged. So bring stuff, bring fishing gear, bring blankets, bring chairs, hang out for a long time, eat food, and enjoy one another. Okay, outdoor baptism today, four o'clock. Next, this week is the 4th of July, right? On Thursday, Independence Day. And we are having a big event here on Thursday at 7.30 
p.m. This has become an annual celebration. We have free hot dogs, snow cones, popcorn, balloon animals. There might be face painting. And it's a big community event. It's a great opportunity because if you've been in Indiana for any amount of time in your life, you know that people around here get excited about the fireworks at Mack Park. We are very, very blessed to be situated in a place to have a great view of the fireworks over that way, over that way. So if you've got friends, relatives, anyone you know, coworkers who are looking for a place to watch the fireworks, I would highly encourage you to invite them this week uh, to our event on Thursday. There are lots of ways you can do this. Feel free to get on Facebook, post it on Facebook, on Instagram or InstaFace as some people call it. Um, what else can you do? If you are at Mac Park Pool, engage people in conversations. Tell them we have a big event coming up. If you, if whatever you're doing with your summer plans, people are out and about a lot. Make sure that you, if you're meeting new people, you're telling them about our event this Thursday. One thing uh, my family likes to do is we get these little business cards that talk about the Independence Day thing, and then my kids walk up and down our street and stick them in everybody's mailboxes. Okay, so that's another thing you can do. These are available out at the. Uh, Connect Center. So Independence Day celebration this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. All right. Now, it is my great pleasure to transition into talking about youth camp and what happened at youth camp this past year. We had a great, great year, and we're going to start off with the annual youth camp recap video, which this year was produced by David Cup, and I have it from a reliable source that this is hot off the presses. David just finished it in the wee hours of this morning. So, youth camp video.
Oh, uh, I just lost the game. Uh. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to invite to the stage Mr. Jim Allshouse. He was here. I don't know where he is now. Oh, I see him coming. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing with Jim. One thing you see at youth camp is people just giving of themselves over and over <laughs> and over again. And this year, I mean, so many people did that, but clearly the person that just stood out was Jim. Every time you turn around, he was giving 100% of himself to the point of he was limping around half of the time because he was broken physically and emotionally. He was like, you know, I mean, it was, he was all in this year. We were really glad you were there. So, hey, Jim. I didn't think all this through. Just so you know. There we go. All right. So, uh, first things first. Are right, you guys ready? Winter is? Coming! Winter is? Coming! Winter is? Coming! Let's see if I get this one right. Sientes los dientes. There we go. All right. Uh, okay. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Okay, hold on. Um. Oh. Vroom, 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 vroom. Vroom, 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 vroom. Vroom, 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 vroom. All right. And then, um. When I say soda, you say pop. Soda. Pop. Soda. Pop. Soda. Pop. All right. Those are the team cheers if you didn't figure that out. All right, so um, apparently this one has a hole in it. Uh, anyway, on a more serious note, if we can do that. Um, youth camp was a great time. Um, we had, um, as you saw from the video, a ton of fun. Um, it was also an incredibly spiritual time for a lot of people there. Um, lots of the kids. Um, the, the, most of the adults. Um, it, it's, it's always a greatly, uh, just a great filling, you know, experience for all of us. Um, just one of the, one of the nights for me in particular, uh, I wanted to share. Um, we just had a, you know, it was just, again, a great time after a, a fun day of activities, great messages. Um, I really felt that the Holy Spirit wanted um, me to share uh, some particular things. Um, I prayed for uh, one of the guys here, um, and in that time, you you could feel the power of the Holy Spirit um, in the room, and that happens every year. Um, it is it is such a wonderful experience to see the kids open up, um, see the see the the adults open up, have those interactions. At any time, you always saw any number of kids kind of sneaking out the side, not because they're trying to, you know, sneak away and go goof off. They wanted to go find an adult and talk and pray and um, it, it, just discuss things, work through some things that the, the Lord's working with them on. Um, and, and this, like I said, this happens every year without, without doubt. The, the Lord really moves mightily in the, in the uh, time that we're there. Um, we're all, we all have a great time. Um, as Jason said, we all just, you know, leave it all out there, give it all out on the field, um, uh, both, both physically in the games and in the fun activities and in these things, but also um, uh, spiritually. We, it, it's, um, it's a time that we all just, you know, as, as adults open up to the kids, and, and the kids open up and, and show us things too. Um, it, it's such an awesome, powerful experience for all of us. Um, and so I just... Also, since I'm here, I just wanted to uh, thank all of the people that helped. There was, um, you know, you can, it's easy to spot like, you know, Jason, his wife, the Eshelmans, all of us that are wearing shirts that helped out that were there. There are folks that helped behind the scenes. Uh, Sarah Failer didn't go. Um, there are a lot of people that didn't go that helped out. 
Um, I had my wife, who stayed home with all six of our children uh, for a week while I went and played uh, for a week, uh, you know, hu husbands, wives, you know, all those people that, you know, sacrificed their time to, you know, take care of the, hold down the fort while we all left, um, you know, all those times. So, again, thank you all of you that did all of that. Um, and so I wanted to just finish up by saying um, I'm going to take this time to publicly announce my retirement as a team leader. You guys nearly killed me. Um, but I did, I, I, I will not be, you know, I'm not retiring entirely. Um, I've had some talks with some broadcasting companies. Um, I've been with Ronnie Myopics people to help out with, um, you know, to do some other things. So I will still be involved in youth camp, but, um, you know, thank you guys for a good last year. So, I'm not wearing that belly bumper, Jim. So, <laughs> yeah, youth camp is a really, really special time. It is, it is just the right mix of fun and friends and rubber chickens and being hunted with laser guns by your pastor and like all this great fun stuff, cheering, being silly. What, one of the other adults said to me this week, what makes, one of the things that makes youth camp so fun and engaging is that we take something completely ridiculous, like launching a rubber chicken with a giant rubber band and somehow convince the kids to take it so seriously. And so they are like really intent on finding ways to make this rubber chicken fly as far as it can and hit a target, and they're so serious about it, it just makes it so hilariously funny. But the, all of that would be pointless if we didn't have happen what the whole point of youth camp is, and that is before we went, we prayed, a bunch of us at Transform prayed that we would see three things at youth camp, that we would encounter God, and not that that can't happen any other place, not like it only happens at youth camp, but we were praying for youth camp so that we would encounter God at youth camp, that people would respond to those encounters and be changed. And I'm so thankful to tell you that that is exactly what happened during those couple of days. The Lord met us. They met, he met kids there at youth camp and changed their hearts, and they're now sitting here in this room different people than they were when they left. And we couldn't ask for anything more than that. They're different people because they've become more like Jesus. And uh, that's something to be really, really thankful about. If you have not been involved with youth camp in the past, no pressure, but a little pressure. It's, <laughs> it's a really great thing. If you're a young, younger person in this room who's not old enough for youth camp yet, be counting down the days because it is a fantastic, fantastic thing. All right. A couple of more things. We know this is a little bit of an extended time of announcements, but it's Youth Sunday, so yeah. We'd like to take some a few minutes to honor those uh, folks who are here today who are seniors, whether they, whether this is uh, kind of like a senior in youth camp or just uh, whether they went to youth camp or not, they're seniors in our church and they're going to be moving on to other things. So I'm going to have these five people join me on stage right now, then I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. Could we have Megan Boozer, Ethan Hudson, Kaya Parks, Emma Smith, and Trevor Walls come on right up here, please. My brother had a uh, bulldog named Boozer. So, <laughs> sorry, it's Bozer. All right, sorry, Megan Bozer. <laughs> sorry. All right, Megan Elizabeth Bozer graduated this spring from Homer Center School District. She has served in Kids Cove and helped to start a Fellowship of Christian Athletes Club at Homer Center. Megan plans to attend Slippery Rock University in the honors program, majoring in economics and accounting with plans to go on to law school.
Ethan Hudson. Ethan Hudson graduated from the Hudson Homeschool Academy. I heard that's really hard to get into. You got to know the right people. <laughs> he serves as a helper in the fourth grade class in Kids Cove. He plans to attend WCCC in the fall and eventually transfer to Pitt to study chemical engineering. Yeah. Kaya McKendra Parks graduated with honors this spring from Seeds of Faith Christian Academy. Kaya qualified for state band on the flute and also played piano and guitar with the school band called Lifted. During her high school career, she played basketball, volleyball, and ran cross country. Kaya has danced for Sue Hewitt Dance Studio for 13 years, focusing on tap, ballet, modern, and jazz. She has served the two-year-old class at Saving Grace Church Children's Ministry for the past six years, and she sang on the worship team for the past two years. She will be attending IUP this fall to pursue a bachelor's degree in speech language pathology. Kaya Parks. Emma Smith graduated this spring from Bethel Park High School. Now, if you're wondering why uh, we have someone from Bethel Park here as a graduating senior, uh, we have people from youth camp who come from churches in uh, various places, several coming from the Pittsburgh area. Emma, how many years of youth camp did you do? Five, yeah. So we've known Emma. If, you have, if you're meeting Emma for the first time, we've known her for a long time. So Emma Smith graduated this spring from Bethel Park High School. She's attended Providence Church of Pittsburgh since she was 10, and this was her fifth year at youth camp. Emma now plans to finish up her third year of cosmetology school and get her license. Then she hopes to attend Douglas Education Center in Manesson, PA, and study special effects makeup. And I can tell you that at youth camp, she pulled off a very convincing Aslan. It was really good. <laughs> and finally, Trevor Matthew Walls graduated this spring from Seeds of Faith Academy. He sang on the Transform worship team. He's been a helper in Kids Cove. And this year, he served as a 1DC camp counselor and just did a fantastic job. He's been working at St. Andrew's Village as a server and plans to work a year and pray about where God is leading him for the future. Amen. So here's what I want to do. I want us to pray for these folks. I'm going to pray for these folks and what the, what the Lord has for them in the future. Youth campers, do you remember what we did on the last day with our seniors? Remember how we gathered around? No fear. Come on up here. I want you to come pray with us. Gather round, friends. The seniors are in here somewhere, I promise. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful, Lord. We are so thankful because you are faithful. We sang about your faithfulness this morning, Lord, and it is true. You are a faithful, good, kind God. You have been faithful to this body. We are so thankful, Lord, for the gift of these seniors to this company of people, Father. We're thankful for the ways that they have obeyed your call. We're thankful for the way that they have served you for your glory. And Father, we give you thanks that while we can't see what you have for them in the future, you see every step, you see every moment, every day. And Father, you have promised to be faithful for whatever is coming for them. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that you would have your will accomplished in the lives of these young people. Father, that they would continue to walk with you and call on your name and submit themselves to your will, Father, and be changed by you as they respond to your goodness. Father, we give you thanks for them. We commit them to you. And we ask, Father, that you would do mighty and wonderful things in their lives. We look forward to seeing it. We ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
All right, hey, seniors, as you're leaving the stage, go find Mr. Ryer. He has a gift for you. Ladies first, guys, okay? <laughs> and one last thing. There, it has been uh, put on the hearts of some of the leaders and some of the youth here this morning that sometime this summer, okay, this is kind of a vague announcement right now, sometime this summer there is going to be held a free car wash here at the church, so be looking for details on that and how you can be involved if no for no other way just coming and having your car washed i know i will be in line because my cars are seriously in need of a wash uh, yeah it's going to be an outreach to the community it's not just to get my car washed although i'm pretty excited about that so be watching for details uh, about that um at this time we are going to dismiss for our break we'll take a five minute break this is when you can take your kids back to kids cove and we will be back in a little bit, and Mark Altrogi will be uh, bringing the message this morning. Oh, no, no, no. No Kids Cove. I lied. There's no Kids Cove this morning for ages five and up because it's the fifth Sunday of the month. So five-minute break. We'll be back with you in a little bit.
Okay, everybody, can we come on back in? So everybody come on back in, please. Thanks. Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Mark. I'm one of the pastors here, and I had a, a great time. I got to go to youth camp on the first day, and uh, I got to uh, speak a couple times, and I love doing that. I, I love speaking to young folks. I love speaking to kids. Some of my kids from Kids Cove may be here. Anybody from Kids Cove here in 5K? Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, one of the things before I start my message, one of the things I did at youth camp is I always am trying to learn new things. And this will tie, this ties in with, with the, the message about God's Word is a treasure and it's full of new things and glorious things for us all the time. But I'm always trying to learn to, new, to do new things. And so at youth camp, I, I'd heard about this thing called flossing. And uh, so I asked Jocelyn, and if anybody else would like to come up and try to teach me again, I was trying to learn it. So Jocelyn, if you'd come up, anybody else want to come up and try and just demonstrate flossing and and I'm going to try and learn how to do it again, all right? So you guys can show, just demonstrate to everybody what flossing is. What? Oh, you're going all on one side. I think you're supposed to switch sides, aren't you? Okay. Okay. All right, I'm going to see if I can learn it again. To learn new things. Uh, cracking sound and uh, at first I thought it might have been the floor but it was actually my joints <laughs> my bones were making a sort of a cracking sound so can somebody please call the ambulance um, since I did that I think I broke something in there no I'm just kidding all right well this morning we're going to talk about discovering God's word is a treasure which is I'm going to give some highlights or, or a quick overview of the message I gave at youth camp. Uh, but first of all, let's pray, and then we'll start. Lord, we are so grateful for these young men and young women, and all of the young men and young women, children in our church, and we just thank you for them. They are a gift from you, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, please help me this morning to help us to look at your word. Holy Spirit, please open up your word to us and we pray that you would just give us faith and hope and a love for you and for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as I, I said at youth camp, there are, are all kinds of stories and movies and even books written about people trying to find a treasure, searching for treasures. And they even risk their lives 
to find treasures. And one, one of the great things in all these movies is the scene where they find the treasure. So we're going to see just a short clip from a movie called National Treasure in which they discover this scene or this, this room full of treasure. So there are all these movies and, and there are all there are lots of scenes where they come into these rooms where they're filled with gold coins and, and jewels, mountains of jewels and gold statues. And at, at youth camp I said, what if I told you that somewhere on the campground there's a cave filled with gold coins and diamonds and precious jewels and gold statues and if you find it, you can keep everything in it. And you have three days at youth camp and all you need to do is you can look anywhere you want. And I would ask you know, the same question. is, What if I told you right now there is a room in this building? And if I, I'll say this to the five, 5K class too. What if I said to you that there's a room in this building that's filled with toys and candy and all kinds of fun things. And if I said, if you find that room in this building, you can have all of it. And you have, you have 30 minutes. And if I said, you can go now, do you think you would go? You'd go, yeah. You'd go looking all through the building. Because there's something about treasures that, that we want. Well, there is a real treasure that every single one of us can have. And the greatest treasure of all is Jesus Christ and the Bible in the Bible God says that he is our treasure and every single one of us can have God as our treasure it says in Psalm 16 5 and 6 the Lord is my chosen portion and my cup you hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Well, that's saying when it says the Lord is my chosen portion. The Lord is my beautiful inheritance. That means the Lord is my treasure. And every single one of us can have the Lord Jesus Christ as our treasure. It's not limited to just a few rich people on earth. Every one of us can have a treasure that is greater than all the treasures in the world put together. And in Philippians 3.8, the Apostle Paul says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. See, Paul was moving ahead in life. He was getting famous. He was getting well-known. People were respecting Paul. He was getting a reputation. And he says, I don't care about any of that. I count it all as worthless compared to knowing Jesus Christ. So Paul was saying, Jesus is my treasure, and I'll give up everything else on earth to have that. But God gives us another treasure as well. 
And that is His Word. The Bible, the Scriptures. And this is what we talked about at, at youth camp. God's Word is a treasure. And in Psalm 119, 162, it says, I rejoice at Your Word like one who finds great spoil. And great spoil is just another way of saying treasure. And so the psalmist is saying, I rejoice that I have the Word of God as if I had a great treasure, great spoil. And then he says, in the way of your testimonies, which is another way of saying God's Word, in the way of your testimonies, Lord, I delight as much as in all riches. And so he's saying, if I, ha I have your testimonies, I have your word, and that is better to me than all the riches in the world. And King David, who wrote this, I believe, was rich. And he says, then he says, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. What, how, how would that affect us? If, someone, if I said to you, I'll give you a choice. I will give you thousands of gold and silver pieces if you'll just give up ever looking at the Word of God. Or if someone said to David, who said this, he said, your, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. If, if, if someone said to King David, who at the time would have been rich, 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 and he's, if someone said to him, David, I will give you $50 billion if you will never read the Bible again. If you will never listen to the Bible, if you will never go to hear the Bible talked about in a church, if you will just have nothing to do with God's Word again, I will give you $50 billion. David would say, are you kidding? Get out of here. You can't even put a price on God's Word. It's more valuable than all the riches in the world. It gives me more joy and happiness than all the riches in the world. And so in Psalm 119, 127, he says, Therefore I love your commandments above gold, above fine gold. And as I was preparing this and I was studying this, I was thinking, boy, before I knew about the Bible, I, I just didn't know this. I would have thought of the Bible like, well... You know, it's a book about stories. You know, it's got all these stories in it, like, you know, Noah and the ark and the story of Israel marching around the city of Jericho, blowing trumpets and the walls falling down. Oh, yeah, the story about Jesus, you know. But I, I would not have thought about God's Word as a treasure. I wouldn't have looked at the Bible as more valuable than anything I could get in this world. I just would have thought of it maybe like a storybook. Or I said, maybe, maybe I, I thought of it at times kind of like maybe an instruction manual, a book of you know, detailed instructions on how we're supposed to live. You know, it's, I, I don't know about you, but I hate instruction manuals. I, I hate it when, when I buy something and then I take out, and it, I open the box and it's not put together, and I take out this sheet and it says, Take part A and insert it into part C, then turn it here, and the print is so small you can't even see it, and it's complicated. The, yeah, like these things. I, I can't stand these things. I, I hate these kinds of things. And that's kind of how I used to sort of think about the Bible. It's just this boring book of all these detailed instructions, and oh, I just don't, but that's not what it is. It's a treasure. God gives us His Word as a treasure so that we can experience Him and have the most joy in Him and love Him and have the most wonderful life we can have in Him. Well, how is God's Word a treasure? Well, first of all, God's Word is a treasure because God Himself speaks to us through His Word. I mean, think about this. The creator of the universe 
the one who created the galaxies, the one who holds the whole universe in place, speaks to you personally and to me through his word. He speaks to us. When I first became a Christian, I thought, God, you got to be so busy running the whole universe. You, well, what, you're not going to have, you won't hear my prayers and you wouldn't speak to me. And then I went to a prayer meeting and I was sitting next to someone. They were talking to Jesus personally like they knew him. And the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. It was like, this person is talking to the creator of the universe like he's his friend. And God wants to speak to you. God wants to, it's not just like God speaks to the whole church. He wants to speak to you personally, individually. And he does that through his word. And there have been times where, you know, and I I generally, if I I don't always think to pray beforehand, but if I say, Lord, please speak to me through your word, he, he does. And in God's word, when he speaks to us, he tells us what he is like. God's word reveals what God is like. He is loving. He is good. He's merciful and kind. You know, we can tell a lot about God. The Bible says we can see by looking at the universe and by looking at nature that we can tell that God is powerful. We can tell that God is creative. A couple weeks ago in Kids Cove, we made... 17-year locusts. Anybody remember that? <laughs> and that's just to show how creative God is. When I was catching, I, I was catching these locusts on my street. I'd pick it up in my hands. I'd look at this locust, and it had this black body and its red eyes, and it would start fluttering its wings. And I'd look at that, and I would think to myself, this thing was in the ground for 17 years. And then it came out. And, and that tells me, just looking at that, tells me a lot about there's got to be a God. How could this bug stay in the ground 17 years and then know when to come out? And so we can learn a lot about na- God by looking at nature. But you know what? We can't learn everything about God by looking at nature. If I go th- for a walk in White's Woods and I look at a, a massive tree, I can say, wow, God is creative and powerful but looking at a tree or looking at nature you can't tell that God is loving you can't tell that God is merciful how do I know by looking at nature that God is merciful when there are things like tsunamis that hit and and giant tidal waves that wipe out towns how can I tell by looking at nature like if I look at a tornado or something like that how would I know that God is loving how can I look at a tree um, even a massive sequoia tree I could say wow God, God is powerful to create that but how would I know God is holy and hates sin and that God how can I know that God must make us holy through his son Jesus see we can't understand anything apart we can't understand everything about God just by looking at nature it's through his word the treasure of God's word when we open up God's word we say wow Lord I didn't know you were like that I didn't know you were so loving you know, the, the, God's word is a treasure because it, it tells us how to be saved and how to have eternal life. Only in God's word, only in the Bible do we see that Jesus Christ, God himself, became a man and lived a sinless life of perfect obedience to his Father. And then, even though he was sinless and, and perfect, God placed all our sins upon Jesus as if Jesus had done my sins and committed our sins. And then Jesus died on the cross and paid for our sins and then rose from the dead so that He can give us when we believe in Him and trust in Him and call on Him and turn to Him and turn from our sins and turn to Jesus. The Bible says He gives us salvation as a free gift 
We could never know that apart from the Bible, from God's Word. And there's all kinds of other religions who don't have the Bible and they have all kinds of other ways that they say, well, here's how you get to heaven. You try to be good all your life. And you try to do more good things that outweigh all the bad things. And it's just impossible to know that salvation is a free gift through Jesus and what he did apart from the Bible. That's another reason it's a treasure. And God's word is a treasure because he tells us how to live our lives. He tells us how he tells us things that seem crazy in the Bible. But it's because they are contrary to everything the world says. You know, I I've I've told many stories about how God's word has saved me in difficult situations and told me how to live and I was I thought about one this morning. Many, many years ago, before I got married and before Mr. McKelvey got married, we were living, we were young Christians and we were living in a farmhouse across from Musser Nursery. And that farmhouse doesn't even exist anymore. But we were there and we had another couple guys there with us. We had this young guy who had been in some trouble and somebody asked us if we could let him come and live in the house with us. And so we said, okay, okay. And, and so one day this guy, this young kid, took my acoustic guitar without asking me and put a great big scratch in it. And then when I found the guitar and I found out what had happened, I was tempted to be so angry with him. But then because, because God had been teaching me through his word how to live, I remembered something I read. It says, Whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. And so I said, okay, I guess I want to be forgiven if I sin against someone, so I'll forgive this guy. And so I said, I, I forgive him in Jesus' name. I forgive him for stealing my guitar, taking my guitar, putting a scratch in it. And so I said, Lord, I not what I feel like doing, but your word tells me how to live, so I'm going to try to do it. Well, a few days later, I was working for a gas company out near Dayton at the time. And I was working, I was working on maps, most boring job in the world. I'd, I'd have to spread out a big map on my desk, had a bottle of India ink, black ink, and I would take a pen, I'd have to dip the pen in the ink at the time, and I'd have to make very precise little numbers about where the gas wells were. And so it was the most boring job. And one day I'm sitting there, and I'm working on a map. And it's the only copy of the map that the company had. And I fall asleep and knock over the ink. And black ink spreads over the whole map. The boss wasn't in that day. The boss did not like me anyway. The boss was all, I could tell the boss was just disgusted at me most of the time, probably because I'd been an art major in college. I don't know why. And I was terrified. The next day I'm going to have to tell the boss, I ruined this map, the only one you got. And I was praying that night. I said, Lord, your word says, whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. I forgave that guy who scratched my guitar. Please. Please help me and work tomorrow. And so next day I went in, I, I went to the boss and said, I have something I gotta tell you. He goes, What? And I, I thought, this is it, he's gonna fire me on the spot. I said, Well, yesterday I was working on a map and I fell asleep and I spilled a whole bottle of India ink on it. He said, Oh, that's okay. We'll figure something else out. What? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. He, he forgave me. He forgave me. God's word is a treasure because it shows us how to live. I would never have known to forgive that kid who scratched my guitar if I hadn't read that in God's word. And over and over in my life, God has proven that to be true. He, when I obey God's word, even if it seems contrary to what I think I should do, he always has blessed me. It, it, God's word tells us all kinds of things. God's word tells us what is the cause of our anger. 
We think anger is caused by other people doing stuff to us. No. In James, it says you want something and don't get it. And so you quarrel and fight and have anger. And that has helped me so many times when I have been tempted to anger. God has helped me to say, wait a minute. Stop for a second and think, what is it that I want right now that I'm not getting? Oh, I want this other person to do this. Oh, I want Christy to do this. And God's word has changed me so many ways. God's word says, here's how you have joy. Because I want joy. Here's how you have joy. Give money to the poor. Give money to the Lord. Give thanks in all things. Praise God for, because He causes all things to work together for good to those who love Him. Bless others. Serve others. Now that seems crazy to me. I would not normally think in my life the way to have joy is by serving others. But God's Word has filled my life with so much joy and I, I just want you guys to have that joy all through your lives. Well, real quickly, how do we open this treasure? How do we enjoy it? Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Your words were found and I ate them. Your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Your words were found. First of all, your words. We need to believe that the Bible is God's word. It says, your, your words were found and I ate them. In other words, I took them in. I took in God's words, not just man's ideas. Someone had told me, this is the word of God. When I was a young Christian, someone says, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. I believe that the Bible was God's word. And it says, your words were found and I ate them. Now, at youth camp, I showed a, a short video of a cow chewing a cud. That was probably the highlight of youth camp, I'm sure. Um, we just showed these cows. And I read this thing by a farmer. It said, you drive by a farm, you see cows just chewing all day long. And this video was a cow chewing. But cows have four parts to their stomach, or four stomachs. And what they do is they take the grass or whatever they eat and they chew on it for a while and then they swallow it and the video showed the cow swallowing but then it goes into one part of their stomach and it, that does its job on it helps digest it but then for cows it comes back up and they chew on it more and then they after a long time they swallow it and goes into the second part of their stomach and so on until it goes through all four, and so they're chewing and chewing and chewing. And that's a sort of a picture of what it means to meditate on God's Word. We take it, we read it, we chew on it, we think about it, we take it in, we bring it back and think about it more. The Holy Spirit at times will bring God's Word to our minds, even when we're not thinking, if we've been reading it regularly and taking it in. So your words were found, and I ate them. And then it says, your words became to me a joy. Your word became to me a joy. It doesn't happen necessarily right away when sometimes I read the Word of God in the morning and it doesn't strike me at that moment, but it, it becomes to me a joy over time. The Holy Spirit brings it back into my life. Another, I remember another time when I was living on the farm with Tim McKelvey. I, I was working at a store, and there was this very uh, attractive young lady there. She was not a Christian, and she lived just down the road from the farmhouse. And, and uh, one day she says, Hey, would you like to come over? Why don't you come over to my house? And uh, we can go horseback riding. And I was very tempted. But then God's word came to my mind. And it was, it was talking about not getting into temptation with young ladies. And it says, it said in this particular proverb, it says, do not even go near the door of her house. And I started to think about that. And I was meditating on that. And I was thinking, okay, well, if I go over there and I go to her door, I'll knock on her door and then she'll say, come in, and then maybe we'll wind up sitting on the couch together, and then who knows, you know, one thing might lead to another. I might fall into sin, 
And so I didn't go horseback riding with her. I, I graciously was able to say it, you know, and, and I wasn't, I didn't say anything mean to her or anything. I just said, I'm, I just, thanks for asking me, but I can't do that. And God's word, I believe, saved me from potential sin. God's word, we take God's word. It became for me a joy. And so if you're reading God's word and you go home, you read it tomorrow and you say, boy, this just didn't seem real exciting to me. Well, keep it up. Keep reading. It'll become a joy. And I, I shared at youth camp how when I first started to play guitar, it didn't even make sense to me. I couldn't, I couldn't, my fingers didn't want to go where they were supposed to go, especially an F chord, which F chord was so hard, you know. But I, at first it was like, how, but you won't go where I say to go. You know, and it took me months and months, and finally, eventually, I got to, you know, where I could just change chords real easy, you know, and it, God's playing guitar became for me a joy. It didn't just happen automatically, and that's the way it is with God's Word. It's a treasure that will become a joy in your life, and God wants you to have that. So I just want to encourage you, Try to start taking regular time with God's Word. For me, the best time is in the morning. First thing when I get up, get a cup of coffee and sit down with God's Word. Some people, it's better. They're, they're too tired in the morning and evening is better, whatever. But if I can just encourage you to regularly try to get in God's Word, even if it's just for five minutes a day. Five minutes. And if anybody in this room, you know, if, if you are not... And on some kind of regular basis, reading God's Word, I just would encourage you, God's Word is a treasure. God reveals Himself through His Word, and God wants to bless every single one of us with joy. So let's pray. Lord, we thank You. Thanks for this great group of folks here this morning. Thank You, Lord, that, for the way they listened and... and uh, just, it's encouraging to me, Lord, just to see their interest in you and your word. We just pray, Lord, you'd give us more, give me, give us more and more of a love for your word. And help us, Lord, to see your word as a treasure. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.